that you'd please wash me in your precious blood. I pray that you'd wash my heart. I pray that you'd cleanse out anything that might be in there that shouldn't be in there. And I pray that, Father, you please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me clearness of mind. Give me clearness and cleanness of heart. And Lord, I pray that you'll do the work today that must be done. Lord, may it not be me, but you. And Lord, I pray that it would be a lasting work, not just today, but many days to come. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. All right, take your Bible this morning now and turn to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and I want you to look at verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Now, is that on the screen up here? Is that on the screen? Oh, praise the Lord, that you got an advantage. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24. But I want you to take your pen now, and I want you to mark something in your Bible. I want you to mark it in your Bible, because it's more important. You want to mark your Bible, because you want the Bible. Uh, do you got, are those Bible pens, brother? Those are Bible pens. Okay, if you don't have a Bible pen, he's going to loan you his pen. So, <laughs> loan it to you. So, mark your Bible. Mark your Bible. And because that way you make it part of yourself. Not just here in the screen. The screen's going to go away. And your Bible may go away. But if you mark it, then it becomes part of you. It becomes part of you. And my verse this morning is one of the most important verses in the entire Bible. So right beside the verse, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligent, for out of it are the issues of life. And now underline and circle in your Bible that word right there, issues of life. The issues of life, circle it, the issues of life. And in the margin of your Bible, in the margin of your Bible, write down, an issue of life is who you're going to marry. That's an issue of life. Who you're going to marry. That's an issue of life. All right. An issue of life is divorce. That's an issue of life. Divorce. An issue of life. Hundreds of issues of life. All the issues of life are determined by what? This or this. All the uh, issues of life are determined by this right here. So you got to do something. So circle the word uh, issues. Now also in the verse, circle the word keep. Keep. You're to keep. Keep your heart. What do you mean keep your heart? You got to keep it right. The heart did not get saved when you got saved. Point number one. Point number one. The heart did not get saved when you got saved. The heart did not get saved when you got saved. Uh, now, I'm being reminded that this right here needs to go on. So I'm going to interrupt myself. Pastor Bemis, would you please interrupt yourself for a minute and put this thing on? Yes, I will. Here we go. We're going to put this on in, a, in there. Now, is that going to fit on there right? Can, is that better, brother? Is that better back there? Can you get it better? Say, say amen. Got to, got to turn it on. Oh, minor details. Got to turn it on. And here we go. There we go. Is it on now? Ah, oh, thank you. Here we go. And this is for a uh, good thing. We got these technology today that's helpful. Say amen. All right, here we go. Number one, point number one, write it down. When you got saved, the day you got saved, you, the Lord took and saved your soul from hell. You don't have to worry about that anymore. But he didn't save your body. Didn't save your body. It's not saved. That is future. Your body will get saved at the rapture. Your body is what's going to give you a fit. Now, when you got saved... Your spirit was born again. John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and verse 
3, John chapter 3, verse 3. That, there it is, John chapter 3. Jesus answered and said unto them, now I wonder why it's not up on that end. No? <laughs> it's not up on that end, it's not for me. But it, your spirit was born again. Now write down, the heart was not born again. The heart is something that can go wrong. The heart can get sidetracked. The heart can get uh, something in it. That's why it said, keep thy heart. If you get something in your heart, boy, it's going to run you, it's going to take you, and it's going to drive you a certain way because the heart's not right. It's not the head. It's the heart that goes and directs a man. All right, number one, when you got saved, your heart did not get saved. Take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel chapter 18 and look at verse 31. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 31, and I wanted to show you a verse that a lot of men take and miscalculate the verse and say you get a new heart. I've heard preachers preach it all the time, say, well, when I got saved, I got a new heart. That's not true. That's not the truth. That's a, a mistake that preachers make. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 31. If you're there, say amen. Raise your hand. Say amen. Here we go. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 31. And it says, it says, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you, now underline it, a new heart. Did it say a new heart? Come on, amen. Say amen. It said a new heart. A new heart. But look who it's aimed at. It's not aimed at a Christian. It's not talking about a Christian. It's not talking about you if you're saved. Now keep reading. A new spirit. For why will you die? Now underline these four words. O house of Israel. He's talking about the Jewish nation. He's not talking about a Christian getting a new heart. So preachers will go to this verse, make a mistake, thinking that a Christian gets a new heart. You do not get a new heart. If something's in your heart, you got to pray and say, Lord, take it out of my heart. When I got saved, when I got saved, before I got saved, I used to cuss. I used to, I used to take the Lord's name in vain. I used to swear. I used I know a lot of, I knew a lot of cuss words because I didn't want nobody to know that I couldn't read. I couldn't read when I was 19 years old. So I cussed to cover it up. And I cussed a lot to cover it up. Cover it up. But when I got saved, the Lord says, uh, you uh, have a bad mouth. I said, yes, but what's bad about that? And then the Lord says, it's coming out of your heart. So I bowed my head and I prayed and I said, Lord, take all these cuss words that are in my mouth and take them out of my heart. And you know what he did? He did it just like that. Amen. Just like that. All those cuss words left. Ain't that something? Man, that was something. But of course, I cussed. Boy, I was a sailor, and man, I, I knew all the words. Boy, I could turn the wall, the wall red. And the Lord took them away. Took them all away. Took them all away. Now read the next verse. Verse 26. A new heart. Who does a new heart belong to? The nation of Israel, when the Lord comes back and puts them in a perfect situation. That's a nation of Israel. That's not a Christian. Have you ever met a Christian that got saved and didn't get rid of all those cuss words and didn't get rid of all those bad words and those bad words still come out? Where does it come from? It comes from down here, Christian. It comes from down here. Get rid of those words. Get rid of those words. Ask God to cleanse your heart. Ask God to cleanse your heart then he'll clean up your mouth and your mouth won't be a garbage can. Say amen. Amen. Now, point, point number two. Point number two. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings chapter 11 and pick up verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 3. This is what can happen to your heart. You can get saved 
and the Lord give you uh, uh, the Holy Spirit and give you an opportunity to change things, and you can get going real good with the Lord, get in fellowship with the Lord, get in the Bible and start handing out gospel tracts and do something for the Lord. And Lord, cleanse your heart up and make it like it ought to be and have that right heart. But then some come along. Some come along and bam, some gets in the heart. It can be what? First Kings chapter 11, verse 3. What does it say? And he has 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. Who's that? That's Solomon. Say amen. That Solomon had 700 wives. Who? what a deal that is. 300 concubines. What a deal that is. Write down, God allowed some things, but he sure didn't want it. So write down the margin of your Bible. Take your pen and in the margin of your Bible. God allows a lot of things, but he don't want it. He didn't want that. God told him not to do that. He did it anyway. Now watch it. We have seven, uh, uh, 300 concubines, his wives, turned away his heart. Underline it. Turn away his heart from what? From God. What happened? He, he went into idolatry and started making idols all over, the, all over Jerusalem and all over the land of Palestine. He'd make an idol here and make an idol there, make an idol there and make an idol there, and his heart goes towards the idol instead of towards God. That was Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. And his heart was turned away from God. Ain't that something? Your heart can be turned away from God. Christian, don't ever let that happen. Don't let your heart be turned away from God. Turned away. Read the next verse. In 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. For it come to pass, when Solomon was what? When he was old. Now, you young people, you're not old yet. You're old. You're old. You're old. I'm old. <laughs> when you get old, you're old. When you get old, how many of you are over 60? Raise your hand. If you're over 60. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're old. Uh, well, you're, you're old. You're young, according to me. I'm 83. <laughs> How many of you are fathers here today? Raise your hand. Happy Father's Day. You, you're, you're still old. And it said, it said, when Solomon was old, that his wife turned away his heart. Watch out, Christian, when you get old, the Lord might turn away your heart. Might turn your heart away. Stay in fellowship with the Lord until you, I'm 83, let's see, I'm 83, no, I'm 82, I'll be 83, today's what, the 16th, 17th, 18th, Tuesday, I'll be 83 years old, I'm an old man, and take some, some advice from an old man, keep your heart, keep your heart right with God, when something gets in it, Something gets in your heart. Are you married? Are you married? Say, yes, I am. Is that your wife? When she says something that upsets you terribly, and she will, because she's a woman, when she does, when she does, don't you let bitterness get in your heart, because you'll get bitter with her. And God says, husbands, Love your wives and be not bitter against them. So if that bitterness gets in your heart and you get bitter and you don't get it out of your heart, you'll get bitter with you and, you'll, and it'll get worse and worse and worse and then you'll lose your child and your wife. Now, did you hear what I just said? I said that because I don't want you to have a bitter heart. Christian, don't let bitterness get in your heart. It'll kill you. 
It'll kill you. It'll destroy you. Don't let envy get in your heart. Now, so there's a Lincoln sitting right out here in the parking lot, a Lincoln. Nice Lincoln. Dirt comes over the top of it and lands on the winch at the back window. It's a nice car. How many of you like a Lincoln? Don't look at a Lincoln and envy and get jealous of the Lincoln car in the parking lot. Because you'll make a mistake. Because then you'll see something and see it, and then that envy will get in your heart, and it'll destroy you. Envy will destroy you. Because then you'll get envy and envy and envy and envy, and envy turns to hatred. And then you'll hate him, the guy that has the nice car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, Christian, take care of your heart. Take care of your heart, because out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Again, point number three. Keep your heart, keep your heart, and keep it clean. Keep it clean. Every day, every day, get down on your hands and knees and say, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I got something in my heart that is just no good. Lord, it's a terrible thing. Lord, will you cleanse it out of my heart? You got to do that all the time. Get a clean heart. Cleanse your heart. Wash it, wash it, wash it. It's white as snow. You better do it every day. Because it'll get in there and it'll destroy you because it'll run you. And it don't get better, it gets worse. You say, preacher, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Me, I do that all the time. And I'm an old man. Because he didn't get saved when I got saved. Take your Bible and turn to Psalms 51 and look at verse 10. Psalms 51, verse 10. Mark your Bible. Mark your Bible, Christian. Mark your Bible. Psalm 51, 10. Psalms 51, 10. Now watch it. There it is. Psalm 51, 10. Thank you. Good deal. That's a good deal. Psalm 51, 10. It says, create... In me, a what kind of heart? Clean heart. Right down the margin of your Bible, it don't stay clean. My heart don't stay clean. I wish it did. I wish it did. It don't stay clean. You got to cleanse it up by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how you cleanse your heart. You say, Lord, take this out of my heart. Take it out of my heart. Take that desire out. Lord, take that want out. Lord, change my water. We got something wrong with us, boy. We we want the wrong thing. You know what's wrong with you? The same thing that's wrong with me. We want the wrong thing. That's what's wrong with us. We ain't home yet. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Your soul is secure. The devil can't touch your soul, but he can touch your flesh, he can touch your spirit, and he can affect you. But he can't touch the soul on the inside. Thank God he can't touch the soul on the inside. I'm secure, but this guy right here ain't secure. This guy right here. You're the problem, buddy. You are the problem. Take your right hand and take your left hand and point it towards your right hand and say, you're the problem. Come on, stay with me. You're the problem. And that comes from here. That comes from here. Create in me, oh God, a clean heart. Don't let, don't let anything get in there. Uh, all kinds of things can get in your heart. 
Uh, point number four. Point number four. Take your Bible now, point number four. And it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 30. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 30. Are you with me? Say amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 30. Here's the Old Testament. Now, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, Then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and render unto every man according to all his ways, whose heart thou knowest. Now underline, whose heart thou knowest. God knows your heart, and God knows every man's heart. You can be sitting here this morning and say, Amen, preacher. Let me hear you say amen. But then in your heart you're saying, oh, I wished he would shut up. Because I want to leave. And I might miss my TV program. Or my baseball game. Or my hockey game. Oh, I wished he'd quit. He's going too late. He's preaching too long. But outside you're going, Amen. Good preaching, preacher. Anybody understand what I just said? This thing right here may not match this thing right here. This thing right here may smile. And this thing down here said, Oh, nail your hide, buddy. See what I'm saying? These things don't match sometimes. Say amen. Fellow says, if, I'm, I'm, if you're happy, you can have joy here and have sadness here. And you have joy here and have sadness here. You say, is that true? That's absolutely true. Absolutely. You say, you've got to be joyful. You can, you can be smiling and bawling in your heart and be smiling out here. How are you doing today, preacher? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. My heart's broken, but I'm going to tell you about it because it's none of your business. Anybody know what I'm saying? Say amen. But God knows your heart. God knows your heart. Take your Bible and turn to Psalms, uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Here's a point number, whatever it is. I don't know what number it is now. Now I lost track of the numbers. <laughs> That's what when you get old, you lost track of a lot of things. <laughs> you lose track of your car keys. Where's my car keys? Who's got my, oh, there they are, right there. There's my car keys. When you get old, you, you lose track of a lot of things. Say amen. How many of you, anybody old and lose track of something? Brother, I know you do lose track of things. You lose, you lose track of things as you go through life. And it's a must. It's a, it's a must that you just say, Lord, I got to well, watch my heart. Oh, Lord, something went wrong with it with my heart. Don't let it stay there very long. Get rid of it immediately. I'll, I'll tell you how to get rid of it. No, where am I at? I'm in Proverbs 23, 7. Am I in Proverbs 23, 7? Take your Bible, turn to Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. Now watch what it says. For as he thinketh, as he thinketh, did it say in his head? As he thinketh in his head? As he thinketh what? In his what? That's down here. That's down here. As he thinketh in his heart. Now what is it? what's the next three words? So is he. The real man is in the heart. Uh, I used to have fellowship with the preacher. Another preacher friend. Preacher friends of mine. And I'm not talking about your pastor either. So don't, don't pass the word on to him. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about a preacher that I'm not going to tell you about. But we would go to breakfast together. And we'd sit at breakfast and he would bring up a subject that, that said... When you get to heaven, you sleep in heaven. So when the rapture occurs, you wake up at the judgment seat of Christ. But until that time comes, you sleep up in heaven. 
So you're dead, and, and you sleep, and you're sleeping up in heaven. And I said to myself, well, preacher, that ain't right. He said, yes, it is. It's right. I'm right. And I and a friend of mine, we'd argue with him, and I said, no, no, you don't sleep when you get to heaven. You're awake when you get to heaven. How many believe you're awake when you get to heaven, but your body's dead? Say amen. And he said, no, that's sleep. And I said, that's soul sleep. That's what the Jehovah's Witness believe. Soul sleep. That's what they believe. And he'd argue with me, and he'd get up in the pulpit, and he wouldn't mention one word about the soul sleep. He'd be zipping quiet. Boy, he wouldn't tell that congregation nothing. We'd go back to the restaurant, and here we was again in the restaurant. And we'd talk again about the soul sleep. And I finally I said, okay, okay, okay. Uh, you're going to sleep, but I'm going to be awake. <laughs> so in the pulpit, he was this way. But when we sat at the restaurant, he was a different guy. Why, why, who is the real preacher, the guy behind the pulpit or the guy in the restaurant? Is the guy in the restaurant the real guy or the guy in the pulpit? The guy in the restaurant's the real guy, not the guy in the pulpit. He's the fake. Because if he really believed that, wouldn't he say the same thing from the pulpit that he says in the pew? Wouldn't he say the same thing here as he says out there? They got to match each other. They don't. What was wrong? This thing right here. And we'd, uh, subject after subject after subject, we'd get on a different subject. Bam, he, would, he wouldn't say a thing about it in the pulpit. Not one word. But here in the restaurant, bam, he'd get another wild subject, another wild subject, and another one, and then another one. And I, we used to say, where is the real? <laughs> Who made the real, real stand up? <laughs> See? That thing right there, that thing right there will run you. Take care of your heart. And if you don't take care of your heart, it will destroy you. Wipe you plumb out off of the face of this earth. Because then you'll want something you don't want. But you really want it, but you don't want it, but you want it, but you don't want it. That old, that old heart is fickled. Write it down. The heart's fickled. It's fickled. It, you, it, you can't trust it. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Jeremiah. Take your Bible now and turn to the book of Jeremiah and turn to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 and look at verse 9. Jeremiah 17, 9. Now, is it up on the screen, Jeremiah 17, 9? Is it on the screen? Okay, Jeremiah 17, 9. Now, are you there? How many of you are in Jeremiah 17, 9? Raise your hand. I want you to mark your Bible because you wanted the Bible to be part of you. Now, you get it up here. Thank God it's up here. The heart, there it is, circle the word in your Bible. The heart, Jeremiah 17, 9. This is a very important verse. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart. The heart, that's this thing down here, and it's not the one that pumps blood. It's not the one that pumps blood. The heart, okay, I'll tell you what the heart is. Look at your wife and say, I love you. Look at her and say, I love you. I love you with all my head. No, it's with all my heart. Say amen. Now you understand what the heart is, don't you? The heart is what you love. The heart is what you love. Your heart is what you love. God wants you to love him. Give God your heart. That's what he wants. God wants your heart. Give it to him. Give him what you love. 
Now, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 says, The heart is, what's that next word? What's that next word? Circle it. Circle it in your Bible. Circle it. Deceitful. Your heart will deceive you. You can't trust your heart. You can't trust it. It'll deceive you. De deceitful above all things. Wow. How many have ever seen a, a rain cloud? I mean, a real sure enough rain cloud. Coming across there like that, and boy, you look up at that and you say, man, that's a rain cloud if I've ever seen one. Boy, we're going to get some rain this afternoon. And not one drop. It deceived you. It deceived you. What is above, 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 above all things? A preacher can deceive you. A preacher can lie to you. Watch out for preachers. They lie to you. Hey, I'm a preacher, I know. I'm a preacher a long time. You say, have you ever lied? Yes. <laughs> yes, Lord, I have. <laughs> While I was in the pulpit. <laughs> Make myself look good. See, that heart for you, you got to watch that heart. You say, I won't lie from the pulpit. Don't kid yourself. Preachers are lie because they want something out of you. They want you to do something. I do want you to do something. I want you to clean your heart, take care of your heart, and watch your heart, and have the right kind of heart all the time. You know how many times the word heart occurs in the Bible? 900 times! It's that important. Wow! That important! Take care of it. The heart is deceitful above all things. Take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 10. Take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 10. And in Romans chapter 10, I want you to see something. Romans chapter 10. Take your Bible, Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Romans chapter 10. Uh, I'll get there in a second. And, uh, and the computer's already there, thank God. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says, That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your head. Did it say that? Did it say that? Believe where? In your heart. If you believe in your head, you'll go to hell. But if you believe in your heart, you can go to heaven. See how important it is? The heart. If your heart is not a believing heart, you're in trouble, boy. You say, I don't believe Jesus died for my sins. You'll go to hell like a bullet. You say, I don't believe he died for my sins. I'll say it again. You'll go to hell like a bullet. Because you don't believe right there. You just believe here. That won't save you. That won't get you to heaven. You've got to believe it here. For with the heart, for with the heart, man believeth unto what? Unto what? Whose righteousness? Jesus Christ's righteousness, not your own. You know what you've got to do to believe? You've got to drop your righteousness. You've got to take your righteousness and say, My baptism will not save me. I preach on the street corner. I preach there. I've been preaching on the street, on the street corner uptown for 50 years. Uptown. That's an old man. 50 years, that's a long time. I get up in the street corner and I take my Bible 
and I put it like this, and as a car comes by and the wind is rolled down, and I see the woman look at me and the man look at me, and I say, your baptism will not save you. Your church did not die for your sins. And man, did that lady get mad. And he laughed. <laughs> she got mad. She took a wheel. And she, I mean, right there at the light, and it was red. And she leaned over and yelled at me outside of the window and yelled, Mm. What's the problem? That thing right there. I hit her religion. I got her God. Her God was her church. You got to believe. Where do you have to believe, Christian? In the heart. In the heart. If your heart's right with God, it's because you received Jesus Christ into your heart, not your head, but into your heart. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If your heart is right with God, if your heart's right with God,